Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that today I'm joined by Sean Bukite, who's the COO of Fountain Life. Hey, Sean. Hey, Phil. Pleasure. Oh, great. Well, Sean, uh, really interested in the work that you guys are doing. We've, we've uh, covered you guys in the past, but uh, of course, you know, healthcare is moving around a lot at the moment. And in the field of longevity, we have a very interesting view on that. But what, what would you say from your Fountain Life perspective is the uh, is the problem with healthcare today? You know, I, I think, you know, what we've learned uh, over the course of the last two years is really there's there's a lot that's right you know, with the healthcare, and it's it's really easy to point out, you know, what's wrong. But if if you're you're sick or you're ill, there's probably no place you'd rather be in, in, in North America to receive, you know, traditional health care. So there's a lot of things that are right. I think the the two areas that we define opportunity for improvement, one is is incentivizing prevention and being more proactive in one's health. So huge opportunity for incentivizing that, whether it's through, uh, you know, health insurance, uh, a plan or or having more proactive synergized experiences for, for the, the like-minded consumer. That would be number one. Number two, uh, you know, I think would be uh, kind of redefining what the experience is in, in the healthcare, meaning, you know, what the consumer a- actually uh, uh, receives. Oftentimes it's, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, wait times could be quite long and, and from a, a customer experience, uh, you know, perspective, it's, it's, you know, you're at the, the mercy or of the schedule of, of the doctor you may be seeing or the hospital you're in. So really it's those two areas that, that, uh, you know, that I see that we see the biggest opportunity for improvement. Interesting. Well, maybe Sean, let's talk, let's take them one by one because uh, interested to know how really Fountain Life is addressing those challenges. So uh, maybe with, with the first one, you also mentioned insurance and stuff, and I'd be very interested to learn about, you know, any view you have on uh, insurance allowables as well, perhaps in, in that in that first part. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we, we have our brick and mortar locations, our Fountain Life centers, uh, largely membership based and, and really Kind of a, a three-step approach in our brick and mortars. One is through you know promoting awareness. Uh, uh, you know those that are interested in longevity and, and really optimization, synergizing that with your your healthcare and, and actually knowing you know what that does and circling back and getting a, a entire view of the results or the effects of or the effectiveness, if you will, of, of that program. Uh, uh, that's number one. So we, we offer that. We 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 promote awareness, but you know that we also provide education as well. What what is and then we provide access as well. So awareness, access, and education on what some of these you know what's available for the person that may want to take a more proactive approach to their own healthcare. Uh, so the the second way that we do that is 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 really you know the, the you know it's a, it's a membership base in our brick and mortar. So how do we you know how do we democratize or, or you know, give a, a portion or, or part of these amazing uh, uh, you know, therapies and, and products to, to the masses? And, and we really, in, in order to do that, what we've done is we developed a, a health insurance uh, company called Fountain Health Insurance. So uh, just like your traditional health insurance, uh, you know, the, the way that we present it is, is we go up to our partners, same sick, you know, whatever the, the, the customer is used to getting today, it's the same, you know, same copay, same. We just try to really, the traditional part of the coverage, we just try to match. But at a fully paid 100% health benefit, we provide four health journeys throughout the year. So no cost benefit. And these are, these are some of these are life-changing things that, you know, can be expensive for one, if, if it's not paid through for your health insurance. But, you know, two, again, awareness, access, and education. People just aren't aware. And we could take one, one, just one of the, the tools that we use within the health insurance would be Grail, the, the blood biopsy cancer screen. It's 54 of the cancer, single vial blood. So every single uh, a person that's on a fountain health insurance plan has access to this from a preventative, along with three other things. So uh, it's a really, I think, uh, you know, as, as you know, companies are, are, are really taking a more strategic ap- approach and providing wellness uh, uh, you know, incentive, but also programs for their employees. Uh, it's traditionally done and separated from a health insurance product. But, you know, I think one of the unique opportunities we have is we actually synergize that with something you're already paying for. We just put in the proactive part of it. Interesting. Sean, so maybe uh, if I could just ask you a question that's just come to my mind about that. So um, you're in the position where, of course, you're offering 
uh, in insurance and of course what you want as an insurance organization maybe not yourselves but typically an insurer doesn't want insurance claims right they want to minimize claims whereas obviously if you're offering traditional longevity services which is like early detection and uh, helping people identify perhaps underlying issues that they weren't aware of of course you're bringing them to the surface so that's a kind of balance point that i guess you've looked at from a actuarial perspective as much as anything else yeah thank you phil and again early detection and and you know obviously from a health benefit but from a, a claim perspective it, it could be you know to catch these uh, uh potential diseases in pre-state or early stage stage zero stage one from a cost benefit far outweighs from catching it in three or four where we're often even the uh if you catch something in, in a, like cancer in stage three or four the outcome is is often not good either so uh, uh but but it's also quite expensive so early detection we find a way to provide that within our health insurance but also within our, our brick and mortar centers as well Got it. Great. So I guess you're you're saving money on the downstream side if you catch it early, right? And you are, and and I would say that's probably the second benefit. You know, the, the first benefit is you know you're you're saving or greatly extending lives of of yourself or or your loved ones. So I would, I would yeah. say that's great. Great. Well, um, uh, maybe Sean, let's talk a little bit about um you know the approach that you've been taking with your patients in in your centers, and you know what types of results are you seeing now? Yeah, it's it's been uh, you know so so really the experience at the center. What we try to do is, is we we try to roadmap, redefine the experience. You know, uh, so we we have a, a really you know career oriented, uh, high level hospitality prep professionals from some of the best you know hospitality companies in the world, like Ritz Carlton and so on and so forth. So from a member experience, we try to roadmap and make that experience as consistent as close as we as you would expect when you go to any five star or luxury uh, company. But the reason why we do that's more purposeful than, than just trying to do it is because we feel and find it's the absolute best way to make that time, to facilitate that time that you're with your Fountain Life vertically integrated medical team, the Fountain Life physician, to make it most effective uh, and efficient you know, for, for each and every one of our members. So, And then the, the post that, the care, the follow-up, uh, we really strive to, to, to really be, you know, that that's a extreme focus of ours. And, and we find, you know, to bring in the best hospitality and, and obviously to facilitate, because at the end of the day, we're, we provide medicine, and uh, but it's all to facilitate that part of the journey. Interesting. And of course, it must be going well, because you just opened your uh, fourth center with your precision diagnostics center, which is in uh, Lake Nona near, uh, near Orlando. So um, tell me about that. Yeah, uh, real, real excited about the, the Lake Nona location. Test completed is actually the second or the third commitment it just, uh, to actually get in development. It took, it took a little bit longer, but, you know, we made the decision, you know, uh, from the very beginning that we, when we built these centers, we wanted to first find out, you know, what are the, what are the markets, what are the uh, events, what are the uh, symposiums, that are really driving conversations around wellness prevention, the future of healthcare. And you know, we first wanted to engage, participate, and eventually, eventually set you know, Fountain Life up to lead those conversations uh, in those various fields. So very early on with Tavistock and Lake Nona, they have something called the Impact Forum. Uh, it's a once a year event, uh, about 400 attendees invitation only. And it does, it does, it does just what I explained, it's all about the future, the future of, of, of medicine, prevention, healthcare, and the technologies and, and companies that, that are woven in to support that. So that was, and then the fact that, you know, Tavistock is a mixed use development, meaning with, 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 with what we do in healthcare and prevention and wellness, there's, there's many different markets now that are building their businesses around having that as at least part of their journey. For instance, uh, wellness tourism, medical tourism, uh, you know, according to the Global Wellness Institute, by 2025, that's a $1.6 trillion industry. So mixed-use development, you have multi-tenant corporate office space, you have country clubs, residential. We wanted to put ourselves in these types of ecosystems and really work with a partner like Tavistock and facilitate an extension of those, those journeys. So they have a beautiful Wave Hotel, they have an ecosystem of partners like Spartan, Racing, Chopra, Center of Yoga. So there's a a huge ecosystem where we could come in 
and not only bring our members, but also provide an extension to the ecosystem that's already there. And then for our current members, provide this you know, extension of experience throughout that uh, wonderful community that's in Lake Nona. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, I, I saw that obviously the uh, Lake Nona event had some very interesting speakers, lots of high profile people. And I, I guess that this this feels like an a interesting center of uh, longevity thinking now. And I guess that really in terms of Tavistock, which I presume is the development company, um, you've worked in partnership with them to create this uh, destination site, uh, this very interesting intersection between whether it's luxury, uh, free time, healthcare, it's quite fascinating. So, you know, how do you see that panning out now? Yeah, it's it's really the uh, it's it's working re very well, and and I think one of the uh, one of the really the main reasons why we work so well with partners like Tavistock and and uh, or any mixed use live work play community is that Fountain Life is really the the perfect complement to everything they have going on. Because what we do is on the on the front end, early detection, optimization, longevity, and then we can leverage the ecosystem to facilitate that journey. So uh, where you know traditional healthcare is you know you know on the back end, you know wait till you break or or something. So it's a little bit you know maybe it's part definitely important part of the journey. But we find we could come in there and quarterback and really kind of take advantage of that entire ecosystem. So. Uh, Lake Nona Tavistock has been just a, a wonderful first opportunity for us to do that. And it's provided so, so many additional, you know, interesting conversations for us. Right. So I guess that you know, that's, a, that's a new model that you've experimented with. It seems like it's working out so far. So do you see that you're going to replicate this model now uh, in your expansion plans by, you know, partnering up with uh, uh, developers and making some of these destination sites uh, start to evolve around perhaps the U.S. and outside U.S.? Yeah, it's it's really our focus now. So, uh, you know, moving forward, so we we kind of extended, uh, uh, we we kind of went all in with this model because of the success of of some of some of our partnerships, including Lake Nona. So, really moving forward, we will only consider mixed use developments, live work play uh, locations as a as a, a possibility for a fountain life because of the success. But you know, to to start it off, you know, we typically we we have something called our community partner program. So we take a local investment, you know, from the market, uh, and we use the capital to build our centers, if you will. We come in as the operating partner, and we're 50-50 partners. So we get to deliver this amazing product. Now the conversation has shifted to where the developer themselves are actually our investment partner, and we work together to roadmap the Fountain Life Center for the benefit of the entire community. So not only facilitating, but also attracting best in class because, you know, if you're a, a, a luxury hospitality company, you know, this is definitely on the roadmap for every company. They don't necessarily want to deliver medicine, but to have access to that, not only can their guests that they come in experience this and have access to Fountain Life, but, you know, the guests that we bring in or the developer brings in can then in turn stay at a, an amazing resort and property. So that's just one example of some of the conversations we're having. Yeah, just a, a, an interesting thought that comes to mind, Sean, really, in terms of when you're looking to plan the, the rollout, are you looking at uh, demographic centers where you've got um, people that are of a certain age with a certain disposable income, or are you looking more on tourist routes where, you know, people are going to be going away for their vacations? Oh, great question, Phil. Thank you. Uh, so it's it's more uh, what, what we find are the conversations that are easiest to have. It's more with the development partner that place wellness and access to wellness and, and medicine as a, a core pillar in the development of the community, because that makes all of this, all of the rest easy. So really, you know, and with that, you know, the demographics and yeah, it's important because, you know, one of the things that we're doing now is with our conversations, we're including a portion of our membership as part of the HOA dues. So that means every single person that lives in the community will have access by default to the Fountain Life Center. So, uh, but, you know, to, to answer your question, all, all that's important, but the fundamentally, the, the, the first most important thing is just having alignment with the position of the center in the community. Got it. Well, I mean, Sean, it's a fascinating subject and it's great to see 
that this clinical layer is now starting to really evolve in the industry and, and getting more commercial and thinking more about obviously the scaling up and that, that tie in with uh, Tavistock sounds like a, a really good first step on that. So thanks very much for joining us today. That's a real pleasure, Phil. Uh, just a tremendous opportunity. Enjoyed speaking with you and, and hope to speak again. Great. Thanks, Sean.